They lied about mulch. This hidden layer grows rich soil 10 times faster than compost. Let's start with why most mulch doesn't work the way you think. Walk into any garden center and you'll see mountains of wood chips, bark, and sawdust marketed as the key to healthy soil. But these materials are almost entirely carbon. When microbes try to break them down, they pull nitrogen from the soil to balance the process. The result? Your plants compete for the very nutrients the mulch is stealing. It's like trying to feed your soil with cardboard. It covers the ground, sure, but it doesn't feed life beneath it. And life beneath the soil is where fertility begins. So while wood-based mulches help retain moisture and block weeds, they can actually starve soil biology. The very organisms that make soil rich, bacteria, fungi, worms, are left hungry for nitrogen. Over time, the surface may look tidy, but the ground underneath becomes sluggish, compacted, and depleted. Old farmers never used those dry, woody mulches. Their mulch was alive. They layered freshly cut weeds, green grass clippings, soft garden trimmings, and even kitchen scraps directly over the soil surface. This blend of fresh organic matter acted as both mulch and fertilizer, a living layer that decomposed in place, feeding microbes right where roots could use their nutrients. When this layer starts breaking down, it triggers a biological chain reaction. Microbes multiply, fungi spread, and worms move upward to feed. The soil transforms from lifeless dirt into a dark, sweet-smelling sponge that holds water, air, and nutrients. This living mulch layer doesn't take months to work. Within two to three weeks, you'll notice a visible change. Darker color, better texture, and a natural, earthy scent that signals healthy microbial activity. To build this layer, you only need two things, greens and browns. The greens supply nitrogen, and the browns provide carbon. Together, they maintain the perfect balance for decomposition, roughly one part brown to two parts green by volume. Start by laying down a thin base layer of browns, about one inch thick. This can be dried leaves, finely chopped straw, or shredded cardboard. The browns keep the greens from compacting, allowing air and water to move through the layer. Next, add two inches of fresh greens. Use grass clippings, pulled weeds, or chopped garden waste, anything soft, green, and recently cut. If you want to include kitchen scraps like fruit or vegetable peels, mix them evenly into the greens before spreading. Avoid thick layers of one material. Variety ensures balanced decomposition. Once your greens are down, lightly water the entire layer. You want it damp, not soaked. For every 10 square feet of garden bed, use about 2 liters of water to moisten the layer thoroughly. This moisture activates microbial life and ensures the material begins to break down evenly. Finally, top the layer with a thin blanket of browns, just half an inch. This covering prevents odors, deters flies, and holds humidity close to the surface. Within a few days, you'll notice warmth under the mulch. That's the sign of microbial activity, the same heat that drives composting, but now it's happening directly in your soil. Bacteria feed first, then fungi join in, weaving white threads that knit the layer together. After a week, lift a corner and take a look. You'll see those fungal threads spreading and the greens darkening. After two weeks, worms will appear, pulling fragments down and naturally tilling your soil from below. Within a month, the entire layer will have collapsed into a rich, dark humus, the building block of fertile soil. This humus doesn't just add nutrients, it transforms your soil structure. It creates aggregates, tiny clumps that trap air, water, and minerals, giving roots the ideal environment to grow. Hard clay loosens, sandy soils hold moisture longer, and compacted beds regain a soft, springy texture. Timing is key. The best time to apply the living mulch layer is right after you clear old crops, while the soil is still moist and warm. That's when microbial life is most active. If you're heading into a rainy or cool season, increase the brown slightly. Make it a one-to-one -one ratio to keep the mix from going sour. 
You can reapply the layer every three to four weeks during the growing season. Each time you add new material, lightly water it again, about two liters of water per 10 square feet, to keep it evenly damp. As these layers merge over time, they build a permanent foundation of fertility. After several cycles, your soil will look and feel as though it's been composted underground. For raised beds, the method is even more powerful. A standard 4 by 8 foot bed will need about one 40 liter bag of fresh green material per layer, combined with 1 to 2 buckets of browns. Lightly water, cover, and let biology do the rest. Within 10 days, you'll notice earthworms returning, water retention improving, and the surface darkening into that deep, living black color every gardener wants. Composting in piles is useful, but honestly, it's slow and energy-intensive. It requires turning, monitoring, and waiting months for results. During that time, much of the nitrogen just burns off as heat and gas. The living mulch layer avoids all that waste by decomposing in place, where every nutrient stays in your soil. Instead of hauling compost to the garden, you're creating compost on the garden. Instead of losing nitrogen to evaporation, you're feeding microbes that convert it directly into plant-available forms. And because the process never overheats, it preserves organic compounds that would otherwise be destroyed in a traditional pile. This system is also self-renewing. As microbes consume the greens, they leave behind sticky compounds that bind soil particles together. These stable aggregates improve structure and resilience. Each new layer feeds the next generation of microbes, building a sustainable, living ecosystem right beneath your crops. The speed of this system comes down to proximity. Compost piles concentrate decomposition away from the soil, but the living mulch layer puts the process right at the root zone. That means every molecule of nitrogen, carbon, and organic acid released during decomposition is immediately accessible. When microbes feed, they excrete humic substances, natural growth stimulants that improve nutrient exchange. Earthworms respond by aerating and enriching the topsoil, accelerating the cycle. Within just one growing season, beds treated this way begin to hold moisture longer, resist erosion, and support stronger, healthier plants. It's the same natural process forests use to maintain fertility for centuries. Fresh matter falling, decomposing, and feeding life below. Only here, you're directing it for your soil's benefit. The myth that compost is the only path to fertile soil has kept gardeners tied to slow, labor-heavy systems. But this forgotten living mulch proves that the fastest way to rebuild soil is to let nature do it where it happens best, right on the surface. So, if you're tired of waiting for compost piles to mature or watching your bark mulch dry into dust, try the living mulch layer. Within one season, you'll see deeper color, better structure, and more life under every handful of soil. It's simple, it's natural, and it works faster than anything you can buy in a bag. For more regenerative soil strategies that actually work, stay tuned right here on Soil & Crops Central. If this video helped you, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share it with other growers who care about rebuilding real, living soil. Together, we can bring back the methods that fed the land long before fertilizers ever existed.